and gentlemen, we have some information that I want to deliver to all of you. This information, I think, is vital. Without this information, you guys are not saving nothing. You're not saving your homes. You're not, not paying bills. You are going to keep running into the same roadblocks. What I can guarantee you is I tried to do the video earlier today. And the system said, you ain't doing this, you know, and messed up everything. You couldn't even hear what I was saying. I had a four-hour consult. Then I had two other one-hour meetings after that. And so I took about an hour break, and now I'm back because I got to be in the right mindset to be giving you this type of information. I can't just throw it to you. It has to be done the right way. First, we're going to go over government obligations. I, I shouldn't be going over that first. I should be going over the Bank of England first, but we're going to cover government obligations first. So without any further, this is the Bank of England. We'll get to this in a second, okay? Uh-oh, I don't see my government obligation. Let's see. There is my government obligation. This is the document that we talked about in the video two days ago. Pay attention, please. Authorizing exchange of coins and currencies. Pay attention to what currencies are. Currencies are just a medium of exchange. Pay attention. Authorizing the exchange of your currencies. What is your currencies? Notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances. These are government obligations. want you to pay attention because that's why Congress says it. Coins and currency. It doesn't say coins and dollar bills. Go, go back and pay attention. We're going to prove it now. I didn't say cool it now. I said prove it now. New edition ain't got nothing to do with this. Anyway, before we lose control. And immediate payment of gold clause securities. Now, that statement is very, very important. Gold clause securities with an S. That includes notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, and other government contractual obligations by the United States. Withdrawing rights, withdrawing, with, withdrawing the right to sue the United States, they're on these new securities, limiting the use of certain appropriations and for other purposes. Let's find out what those other purposes are, shall we? Whereas in order to maintain the uniform value, equal power for every dollar, of all coins and currencies of the United States, all currencies, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, Federal Reserve notes, securities, treaty bills, and so forth, of the United States, public resolution number 10 of June 5th, 1933, otherwise known as joint resolution June 5th, 1933, declared provisions known as gold clauses to be against public policy, prohibiting the use in obligations thereafter incurred and provided that monies of the United States legal tender for obligations generally was legal tender for all obligations with or without a gold clauses. And now pay attention. It's not talking about gold clauses as if there is 24 different contracts with a gold clause. It's talking about a legal term, gold clauses. Remember, they put an S on it, with or without gold clauses. They didn't have to, it, they could have simply said with or without a gold clause. But they said gold clauses because that phrase is a legal term. It means something. Let's find out what gold clauses means because they've used it several times, not just up here, but they've used it, gold clause securities. They've used it several times. So those are your key phrases. Pay attention when they repeat phrases like that, United States gold clause securities preamble. That's what this act is, the United States gold clause securities act. Simple as that. So let's continue. Whereas the United States has paid or will continue to pay to the holder of all its securities, anybody who's holding your promissory note, anybody who's holding your bill of exchange, the United States is guaranteed it will pay. 
as long as it's for a necessity. As long as it's for a necessity. As long as it's for a necessity and you follow procedure. What is that? We'll talk about it in a second. Pay attention. Holder of all of its securities, their principal and interest. Now that's interesting. Dollar for dollar, equal power for every dollar, in lawful monies of the United States, either legal tender or credits. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's a secret. That's why nobody knows about this. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate, the House of Representatives of the United States of America, and Congress assembled that the lawful holders of coins and currencies, pay attention to the currencies, we're not concerned about the coins, of the United States shall be entitled to exchange them, medium of exchange, they are currency, ta-da, dollar for dollar, equal power for every dollar. For other coins or currencies, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, hold on, which may be lawfully acquired and are legal tender for public and private debts. What you all do not realize is that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankruptcy acceptances are legal tender for public and private debt. You haven't heard me ever say that because, why? Many of you wouldn't understand how to explain it if you were asked to explain it. And don't sit up here and say you do because I've listened to some of you. And y'all are so, back, I mean, um, got stuff so um, so uh, discombobulated that, ooh, we, uh -uh, that's why you ain't heard me say it. I've been telling you for years that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances are currency. They're equal at par value with Federal Reserve notes. They are currencies of the United States. Pay attention to currencies, which may be lawfully acquired. Giving them to the Federal Reserve. It says procuring those, procuring the same, says they shall be par value. For the same purposes as national bank notes, which are Federal Reserve notes. Okay, pay attention. Let's continue. Our legal tender for public and private debts. And that the owners of the gold clause securities. Pay attention. The holder in due course is the owner. Told you right here. It says the United States has paid or will continue to pay to the holder. Okay, so that's the owner, not you. And that the owners of the gold clause securities of the United States shall be, at their election, entitled to receive immediate payment of the stated dollar amount thereof with interest as of the date of the payment and prior to the maturity or prior to the redemption date, whatever is earlier. Now, here is the section below that puts limitations on prior to the maturity. They give a date in which that has to be done. We don't want prior to the maturity. We want at maturity. Okay? Look, there's no CH in that word. Maturity. Sorry if you guys are pronouncing that maturity. There's no CH in this word. Lord have mercy. Mature. There, there is no CH. There is no mature. I don't know where that junk started, but they need to go take that back and uh, exchange that starter. Oh, because that junk ain't working. Now, I want y'all to pay attention because this is the next important part right here. This doesn't apply to us, so you can forget this section right here. Okay, this was only for a certain period of time, and this is an exception. We don't care about this exception. This exception doesn't apply to us. Pay attention. Any consent which the United States has given to anyone to bring a lawsuit against it, we're, we're, we're taking that back. That's what that section is. This one right here tells you, except in cases with respects, see, this is an exception, exception in cases with respects to which consent is not withdrawn, and the United States hasn't withdrawn all consent, under Section 2, which is the one above, no sum, whether heretofore or hereafter appropriated or authorized to be expended, shall be available for or expended in the payment upon securities, coins, currencies of the United States, except for an equal and uniform dollar amount, meaning they're not going to pay interest. Pay attention. Equal and uniform dollar amount. There's no interest associated with this one. Remember the other one above says that it included interest? 
amount thereof, payment date maturity prior to thereof, and then up here it talks about giving it interest. So you got interest when you principal and interest. You got interest before. Down here they said after that that cutoff date, y'all ain't getting no interest. Now let's let's continue. Here is the point, people. Took 10 minutes to get here, but we had to explain what they were talking about first. As used in this resolution, the phrase, see, told you, legal terminology, gold clause, it's a phrase, it's not words, so stop looking at it, gold clause defined. It's a phrase, they give it its own definition, let's find out what it means, shall we? Means, so we don't have to guess, it tells us what it means. They're trying to copy scripture. If you don't believe me, go and look at the wild beast and see if you don't see, it tells you what it means. Go look at the harlot. The hoe, the prostitute, the slut known as Babylon the Great, and see if it doesn't tell you what her name means, who she is. Devoted whole chapters to that stuff. So they're trying to be exactly the same. That's what they do. They copy. They're plagiarists. As used in this resolution, the phrase gold clause means a provision contained in or made with respects to an obligation which purports to give the obligee a right to require payment in, we're going to ignore this right here, a particular kind of currency of the United States or in an amount of money of the United States measured thereby. See, it does say gold and it does say coins, but we're not focused on those two. We're going to stay focused on currency and money. Why? Hey, let's read it again. Means a provision. The original act says any provision contained in or made with respects to any obligation, an obligation which purports to give the obligee the right to require payment in a particular kind of currency of the United States or in an amount of money of the United States measured thereby, dollar for dollar, is declared to be against public policy by public resolution number 10 of June 5th, 1933. Other people say, how don't resolute in 192, but there is no law known as how to drink resolution 192. Just no law, so stop thinking that house joint resolution is a law. It is, pay attention, public resolution number 10 of June 5th, 1933, or the June 5th, 1933 Act. That's the other short phrase for it. Or the Act to Uniform the Value of the Coins and Currencies of the United States. How do we know this? Well, first the Act said it, and then they told you. They told you right here, known as gold clauses, and then it tells you to uniform the value of the coins and currency to the United States. That's what that's look, that's what they're talking about. Lord have mercy. They're talking about that act, people. <sighs> okay. What this is what I study, people. This is what I know. And the phrase, securities of the United States. Yay! Let's talk about these securities. Securities of the United States means domestic public debt obligations. Pay attention. Domestic, you, you are domestics, you are domesticated. Don't believe me? Go back and look. Go look up the word domestic. Okay, D-O-M-E-S-T-I-C. Let's do that. Sorry, I am tired. So spelling ain't going to be the thing today. I'm just, I'm too tired. Hold on. Ah, domestic, domestic, domestic. Ah, domestic generally means relating to someone's family, home or home country. Domestic work is work done in the home. A domestic is some a domestic is someone. A domestic is someone. A domestic is someone. A domestic is a person who works in a home, such as a nanny or a maid. A domestic is also used to refer to products that are purchased in your country or policies or affairs related to your country. Aw, he's domesticated. Okay, let's do this. Since it's in the 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Okay, 99 problems of domestic. Uh-oh. Sorry, I had the water running. And that turned it off because it was starting to get cold in here. Man, drop the temperature real, real quick. It's a cooler day than all the other days. This is the first day that we got to 100 and we didn't surpass it. So we every other day we're 117. Woo-wee. We're going to be back up there next week. Just want you guys to understand, 
domestic. Words have meanings. Words have meanings. Words have meanings. Related to or running a home or family relations, existing or occurring inside a particular country, not foreign or international, a person who is paid to help with menial tasks such as cleaning. Sorry. So let's go back and read it. Securities of the United States means the domestic public debt obligation of the United States. The debts that are incurred within the United States, including by you. Okay? Including, pay attention, bonds, the bonds you write, the bonds SACOM writes, the bonds. They're value, people. You just have to understand how to value weight your papers. Notes. Hmm. The easiest way to evaluate your papers is to secure them, back them with something of value. We do federal credits. Ta-da! It's real simple. A lot of people don't understand the value of that. I wish they did because they'd be doing a whole lot better. Anyway, notes. Any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, let's prove that because you guys need to see that for yourself. We're going to go all the way to the top paragraph, number one paragraph, this paragraph right here. Pay attention to this. Upon direct deposit with the Treasury of the United States or any direct obligation of the United States, those securities, or of any notes. Look at that. Any notes. So let's go back and see what they were saying. Notes. See, with the S at the end, that's plural. Any notes. Certificates of indebtedness. Pay attention. Certificates of indebtedness. You guys get certificates of indebtedness all the time. You get a bill. Oh, wait, wait. Y'all didn't know? Hold on a second. I'll be right back. I apologize, everyone. I needed to make sure my microphone was on, so hold on. Wake up. Wake up. Certificates of indebtedness. Close quote. Open quote. Open quote. Stop listening. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my voice recognition has been, oh, please, um, where are y'all at? Y'all supposed to be spelling it. I know how to spell it, but it ain't letting me do it the right way. Ah. Lord have mercy. Um, I've been having some issues with the voice recognition because it's run by AI and AI has completely taken it over and caused it to act a fool, so it's going to die pretty soon. Certificates of indebtedness. See, that's the part right there that should have popped up a long time ago. <sighs> Were short-term, coupon-bearing government securities, pay attention, once issued by the United States Treasury, which were replaced by treasury bills. But hold on, how to get a certificate of indebtedness? And watch this. I'm Wait, let's do something for y'all. Let me show y'all how y'all need to pay attention. The secretary may prescribe conditions for issuing certificates of indebtedness and T-bills under blah, 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 blah. So hold on now. How to redeem a certificate of indebtedness. And so watch this. We're going to go to the, the idiot. Got to. Sorry. I am looking to create it's been giving me a problem all day one second I am looking to create
a certificate of indebtedness, comma, I need you to incorporate all of the elements. And I want to use these certificates of indebtedness under the act of August 27, 1935, which represents an obligation of the United States, comma, to help offset my portion of public indebtedness as prescribed by the act, period. You are not to provide any nuances, any clarifications, or your opinion, comma, your opinion doesn't matter, comma, I don't care about your opinion, and I don't want to hear your opinion. Is that understood? Question mark. Stop listening. Okay. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just that simple. Literally, just that simple. Oh, ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right. Am I, I'm not using, I'm just showing you guys how. They told you right here, certificates of indebtedness. They didn't say that only the treasury gets to do certificates of indebtedness. There is no law only authorizing the treasury to do certificates of indebtedness. It says, and treasury bills and other obligations for the repayment of money. Pay attention. Or for interest thereon. You get to use this junk to pay your bills. Issued or guaranteed by the United States. These are securities of the United States. Ta-da. How did we know? Let's go over here to the act that started it all. Let's scroll down to that paragraph I done told y'all about, this orange paragraph. We have made provisions, provided that any direct obligation of the United States, this is page, I think this is page 79 of the um, congressional record respecting the so-called March 9, 1933 Act, bottom right-hand side paragraph. Some of the people that watch the videos can't actually watch the videos. Okay, why? Because they are visually impaired. So I am cognizant for the most part that they are there because I got to meet some of them. All right. Or any notes, any, see, any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the Federal Reserve Act, and I'm, get out of here. Sorry, I almost turned y'all off because he was getting on my nerves. Acquired under the Federal Reserve Act, in other words, uh, or bankers' acceptances acquired by the Federal Reserve may be deposited with the Treasury of the United States or with the Federal Reserve agents and upon these securities. These securities, these are all government obligations. They are government securities. And upon these securities, okay, for the entire amount of such securities. These are securities, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's go back so that you can put the pieces together. Guaranteed by the United States, securities of the United States is explained right here. It means any public debt obligation where the United States has assumed authority over the public debt as a result of the March 9, 1933 Act. Ta-da. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to let this video be where it is. I'm going to start the other one, and then we're going to go into the other conversation. This is enough. That's 24 minutes that you guys have had this information right here. Hopefully, some of you will study this. Hopefully, some of you will study this. Hopefully, some of you will get it. Got to go.